Scientists turn lead into gold with a particle accelerator. The estimated cost about one quadrillion dollars per ounce. This is a Scientific American article. It sounds like modern alchemy is quite expensive. No wonder the Anunnaki wanted our gold. Just joking. Or am I? Is it truth and humor? You decide. Let's go over the scientific data so that I don't divagate. Rex Bear Leak Project, how the heck are you? This podcast is brought to you by Leak Project. Subscribe today. Go to leakproject.com, become a premium member, and you'll get access to over a thousand podcasts, downloadable, streamable, ad free. All right. Now, this analysis of being a quadrillion dollars per ounce is from an experiment that's over 30 years old. It might be much more efficient and cost effective now because. There are dozens of particle accelerators around the world combined with current technologies and advancements that have brought the cost down substantially. You can get your DNA now broken down for about 100 bucks. It used to cost over a billion dollars. Think about computers and the advancements with what a $300 computer would get you now versus what a $3,000 would get you maybe 15 years ago, 20 years ago. So the answer is fact, by the way. You can turn different elements into gold. And let me read to you an excerpt from this article. With the dawn of the atomic age in the 20th century, the transmutation of elements finally became possible. Now, nuclear physicists can transform one element to another, with nuclear reactors, uranium, plutonium, heavy isotopes, etc. And that's all based on the quantity of neutrons. Protons is in its nucleus, whereas the isotope of a given element is determined by the quantity of the neutrons. Now, the fabled transmutation, aka alchemy, turning lead into gold, is indeed possible. All you need is a particle accelerator. Get yours today. Just make one in the garage. Why not? A vast supply of energy and an extremely low expectation of how much gold you will end up with, though, is what you might want to consider before you invest in a particle accelerator. So 30 years ago, nuclear scientists from Berkeley National Laboratory, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in California, succeeded in producing very small amounts of gold from bismuth. It is a metallic element adjacent to lead on the periodic table. This same process does work for lead, but isolating the gold at the end of the reaction is a lot more difficult, says David J. Morrissey of Michigan State University. Now, there was a scientist that did this research and said, we could have used lead in the experiments, but we used bismuth because it had only, it has only one stable isotope, making it easier to separate gold from bismuth versus lead, which has four stable isotopic identities. Now, using the LBNL Bevelac Particle Accelerator, Morrissey and his colleagues boosted beams of carbon and neon nuclei almost at light speed, slamming it into these foils of bismuth. So these high-speed nucleus beams would collide with an atom of bismuth, and it shears off part of the nucleus of the bismuth. So there's a slightly dilapidated atom behind it. So sifting through the particle wreckage, the team was able to find a number of transmuted atoms which four protons were removed from the bismuth atom and that actually produced gold. So modern alchemy. Along with four protons, the collision induced reactions removed anywhere from six to 15 neutrons producing a range of gold isotopes from gold 190 to gold 199, and this was reported in March of 1981 
in the issue of physical review C. So now there's dozens of these particle accelerators around the world. Maybe they're actually attempting to transform matter and create gold. And maybe by doing that, that is actually causing ripple effects in the time Akashic Records continuum. It's like changing the hard drive a little bit. So this amount of gold that was produced was so minute that Morrissey and his colleagues had to identify it by measuring the radiation that is given off by unstable gold nuclei. Now, with that said, being in 1980, when the experiment was carried out, if you wanted to rent out one of these particle beam accelerators, <laughs> it was about $5,000 an hour. And they used about a day's worth of beam time. So according to the math, according to Walter Loveland from Oregon State University, the nuclear chemist, or nuclear chemist, nanu, 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 one of the researchers, Glenn Seaborg, Seaborg, he actually shared the 1951 Nobel Prize in chemistry, working on heavy elements. He was the senior author of the study and said it would cost more than one quadrillion dollars per ounce to produce gold at this experiment. He told the Associated Press that year. Now, gold that currently goes for what? A little over a thousand dollars an ounce? I haven't even been keeping track of it lately. Question is, if they take a huge block of lead or bismuth and just like drop it down and then crank that accelerator up and boom, gold's created, just formed. You know, you've got a ton of gold created. By transforming these elements, what does that do if we're all connected to the quantum level? Reminds me of how when they started messing with the DNA of fruit flies, just by changing a couple strands, the fruit flies came out with these weird red eyeballs. And they were, like, they had no color. They were not even, not even white. It was like this, I don't know, it was just weird. They looked like these transformer slash hybrid alien flies with no pigmentation. It was just bizarre. But anyway, I dive a gate. Let's take a look at some of these cyclotrons, early accelerators. So see, these are some of the early accelerators. The 9-inch. How do you like that? The 11-inch. Hello! Man, then you've got a 27-inch cyclotron. Let's don't even go there. I mean, these things are massive. Then you get into the Berkeley Oak Ridge National Laboratory. And those are nothing in comparison to some of the ones now, like with CERN. Ooh, look at this one. Cockcroft accelerator. I wonder what size that one is. That's the proton accelerated particle opportunity. Then you have synchrotrons. Synchrotrons. The Bevatron, the Birmingham Synchrotron, the Cosmotron. Is that what they call it these days? I'm telling you, I can't make this up. It's right here. I'm just saying, I'm just repeating it. How about the U-70 Proton Synchrotron from Russia? That sounds like a... I'm going to say it. Here you go. The Diamond Light Source. This is at the Harwell Campus, UK. This is a newer one. This bad boy has a circular ring of 561 meters around. The girth of the diamond light source. The diamond light source nanny, nanny, is 561.6 meters in girth. Now you have the, the cozy. The cozy. Yep, it's got a 183 meter circular ring. Now if we get into the high intensity hadron accelerators... Mesons, 
and neutron sources. We're talking shape and size. Does size matter, ladies? 800 meters linear and 30 meters in girth. How about the, uh, the high intensity? You've heard about the high intensity ones, right? Those bad boys are pumping 590 MEVs, proton accelerator. This bad boy is in Switzerland, and it has a ring cyclotron pushing protons of unprecedented proportions. So can these things, like, transform lead into gold? Is that what they're doing also? You know, they're, they're, creating, they're creating time warps. They're, they're manipulating the, the time spectrums, and they're attempting to open up these portals into different dimensions. They're smashing particles looking for the builder's code. But once they find that, once they're like, okay, we found it. All right, that was a good $10 trillion spent. Now let's just, let's just go. Maybe we could turn it into a tourist designation. That's what we should do. We should turn this into a tourist designation. We can give tours. We can offer popcorn. Charge 100 bucks a pop. We could turn it into a little resort. We can add some swimming pools down here, some hot tubs. That's what we'll do. Because it is a particle accelerator. Can you imagine? Like, you're in there. They've got this hot tub right where they're... Oh, the hot tub machine. What was that? What was that movie? The hot... Oh, yeah. Hello. Hot tub time machine. The hot tub time machine, ladies and gentlemen. This is... That's what they're doing. That's where they got it from. They put a hot tub there in one of these colliders. And they blasted these guys back into the 80s with a chunk of gold. They took a chunk of gold with them. How cool is that? I knew it. I knew there was more to it than that. So you're looking at some of these older accelerators. And this one looks like the... hmm, This one might be a newer one. Wiseman Institute. Rehovat, Israel. The high-energy physics opportunities that you'll have out there. Nuclear physics and isotope production. So, I think that's about it. I'll leave it at that. Quick update. How do you do it cheaper? And what are the consequences? How did the ancients transform lead into gold? They talked about it thousands of years ago. Did the Atlanteans have the ability to do that? Heck, are there people right now that can do it? And they just don't tell us about it. You know how China got a bunch of gold, tungsten bars, gold-wrapped, tungsten-filled bars? They're like, give us our gold. They're like, okay, here you go. They're like, wait, that's tungsten. What? It's got gold around it. It's the same weight. I don't know how it happened. Take it. If you don't like it, deal with it. I mean, that's pretty much what happened. At least that's what they're letting on. Like, yeah, so what? What are you going to do about it? I'm Tony. What's your name? You're a donkey. I'll feed you to the fish, you donkey. I'm Tony. You know, you don't mess with Tony. Just read the Bible. Give me your money. Be a good little, be a good little donkey. I'll feed you to the piranha. I mean, even the Sumerians were talking about getting fed to the fish. (laughs) So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. LeagueProject.com. Be excellent to each other, and people will probably be excellent to you. Be the change you want to see.